In this tutorial, we will be taking these vectors we created in the vector drawing tutorial. If you missed it, you can still join in by using the pre prepared file, and we are going to toolpath them to get this finished product that you can see on screen. So let's start by opening a copy of the software if we haven't already. And I'm just going to open the file that we created in the last tutorial. So I'm just going to go to open and select my vector phone underscore vectors and then click open. Since we're going to be concentrating purely on toolpathing, let's go over to the toolpath tab. So we can do this number wise. I'm just going to select to switch to the toolpath tab here. So the first toolpath we're going to concentrate on is pocketing in between this vector here and the text so that the text is all left standing up above the rest of the material. So to do this, first of all we need to select our outer vector and then we need to select our text. So to do this, simply hold the shift button down on the keyboard and then just drag a box which fully encloses the text that we want to select but doesn't fully enclose the serial number. So, like so. And when we've done that, simply come over to the toolpath operations and select the pocket toolpath icon here. Next, we just need to specify a few parameters. So, we want to have the start depth at the top of the material, so that would be 0, 0. We want to have a cut depth of 3 64ths of an inch. So, in the likely event that you don't know what the decimal value is of that, you simply just type in 3 divided by 64 and press the equals key. Next we can select our tool. So come over to the tool and then press the select button. And I want to use uh, an 8 inch tool. So as you can see I don't have one of those at the moment. So we can simply select to just copy that one and just specify the tool that we want to use. And when we're happy with that, just press OK. Now, I'm not sure that the 8th inch tool is actually going to be able to get in between all the characters, and especially the inside of the E, O, P, and O, and E again. So what we can do is we can make use of the toolpath preview function. So let's just carry on specifying the rest of the parameters on this, and then we can preview to see how our text looks. So we want to just ramp in on this. So I'm just going to specify a ramp distance of half an inch. And when we've done that, we can give this a name. So pocket text and then press calculate. In the preview toolpath form, we can specify the material that we want to have our nameplate on. So I'm just going to find steel. I'm going to choose steel bright. And then for the machined area, I'm going to just select a toolpath color and I'll specify that as a dark green. And then I'm just going to animate the preview. So you can see that the animate preview is checked and the draw tool. I'm just going to slow the speed down so you can see this happening. And as we suspected, you can tell the tool hasn't been small enough to get in between the characters so for instance like in between the E and the C here and also uh, in between the area in the E as well and that is really one of the great features about the preview toolpaths is the fact that you can see what it will look like if it was going to be machined on CNC so what we can do now as we've seen that it's not going to machine as we would like it we can simply reset the preview, we can close this form and we can then double click on the pocket toolpath and we can then change the tool. So again select and this time I'm going to create a sixteenth end mill. So I'm just going to copy that again and then I'm just going to specify that. So 1 divided by 16 equals and then I can just type that up here so I can either type in 0.625 or rather than have it as the decimal value you can simply just type in 1 16th and just make sure that the values 
are going to be okay for the tool so for this I don't really want the pass depth to be any bigger than uh, 0, 3 and the step over is fine and the rest of the feed rate and plunge rate is fine as well so I'm just going to click apply and then OK on that and then all I need to do is simply just press, press the calculate button and that will recalculate the toolpath with the new tool all we need to do again is just simply press the preview selected toolpath and we can then watch that unfold and as you can see that looks a lot better this time it's definitely got into all the letters and the clearance in between each of the letters uh, has been made as well you may have noticed as well while watching that preview that the tool did take multiple passes to pocket out that material now since we're using a smaller tool we obviously don't want to have any tool breakages so we've specified a smaller pass depth so it may take longer to run but you do get better overall effect on the characters so let's press close on the preview toolpass form the next thing we want to toolpath is our serial text so if we just go back to the 2D view and then deselect in the white space and then select our serial text we can then, as we want to profile on these vectors, we simply select the profile toolpath icon. And since we've already pocketed down 3 64ths of an inch, we need to make sure that the start depth is 3 64ths of an inch into the material. So again, just type in 3 divided by 64 and then press the equals key on that. And then we want to cut down into the, for the actual text 0 0.02. So just type that into the cut depth there. Next we can select our tool. So let's go to the select button here. And for this I want to use a 60 degree V bit and a quarter inch shank. So I'm just going to select my tool and then press OK. This next part is very important. So it asks us where we want to machine the vectors. And it gives us three options, outside, inside and on. As this is single line text, we want our tool to follow the exact vectors precisely. So we want to make sure that we machine on the vectors. So just select that option there. The rest of the options should be fine, so we can just give that a name. So I'm just going to call that Profile Serial. And then hit Calculate. And we can then preview this one as well. So while it's highlighted here, simply click the preview selected toolpath and that should draw that for us, as you can see. You can just change that toolpath colour to match the background. So just select the drop down icon here and then select dark green. And that's what it would look like if we'd got green material that we were drilling into. So let's just close that form and just zoom out a little on the 3D view there. So let's go back to the 2D view. Next we want to create a drilling toolpath for our holes. So simply select all the circles. So first select the first one and then hold shift and then select the rest of the circles. And once they're all highlighted come over to the drill toolpath icon and just select that and we want to have the start depth at the top of the material and the cut depth wants to be the full depth of the material so if you don't know what that is or you may have forgotten or you just want to use the shortcut simply just type Z equals and that will then give us the depth of the material next we can select our tool so just hit the select button and if you remember our holes that we specified were 1 16th of an inch in diameter so let's select the 1 16th inch end mill. Just make sure all the parameters are correct for your machine setup and then press OK. The next option we are able to choose is to use peg drilling. Now what this does is this will drill part of the way down and then it will retract up to remove the chips that it may have created. But uh, since we're only drilling down an eighth of an inch we'll be fine without that. So we can skip the rest of the options and just give this a name. I'm just going to call this drill holes and then click calculate and we can then preview this one as well there we go and then click close on the preview toolpath form 
and then go to the, the last tool view path again. that we will be creating just clicking the is white our space to deselect our holes. So if we go and select the outer border vector, and then go over to the profile toolpath icon, we can then start specifying our parameters. So we want to have a start depth at the top of the material, so that's zero zero, and we want to cut through the whole of the depth of the material. So simply type in Z equals. Next, we can select our tool. So for this, I'm going to want to use an 8th inch end mill. So I'm just going to press the select button there. And then I'm going to select the 8th inch end mill. So again, just make sure that the speeds and feeds are all correct for your machine. And then press OK. If you do need to make any minor edits to that, rather than having them save for every other toolpath that you create, you can just use the edit uh, tool. And this will edit it for purely just this toolpath. The next option that we have is to choose where we want to actually machine the vectors. For this we want to machine outside of the vectors that we've selected, so select that option there. The next parameter that we want to specify is that we do want to have tabs to our toolpath. So simply check the option there and then click on the edit tabs button. And what we can do is we can simply come on the vector and simply just select where we want to have our tabs. So I'm just going to have two tabs on the length and one on each side. And when we're happy with that, just simply click close. We can edit the tabs length and thickness at any time before we do calculate the toolpath. So I can see that these are a little large, so I'm just going to change the length to an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to change the thickness as at the moment that's the same thickness as the depth of material so I'm just going to change that to 0 0.05 and then I'm just going to give this a name so I'm just going to call this profile cut out and then hit calculate and then what I can do is I can just zoom out a little and then hit the preview button as you can see that's created our tabs on our cutout pass so that will hold our plate in place while we're just doing the majority of the cutout work. The next thing we would do is we would close the preview toolpath form and then we would save out all of these uh, separately into their own post processor code. One last thing we might like to do before heading over to the machine to run this is simply to save our work with all the toolpaths. So I'm just going to go over to the file and then press the save as button and I'm just going to change this from vectors and I call this with underscore toolpaths and then hit the save button and that concludes this tutorial